This is for uh, Dr. Humor, but also I'll, I'll, I'll pose it to Dr. Appi. How probable is theism? What's the best argument for theism, in your opinion? Yeah, good. Yeah, I like this question because it lets me plug, you know, this book, Knowledge, Knowledge, Reality, and Value, in which uh, I do talk about theism. Uh, it's an introduction to philosophy. The best argument, um, you know, that I know of is the fine-tuning argument. Hmm. Um, what's how probable is theism? Like, I really don't know. It's like really hmm. hard for me to assess. So, okay, so I think. Um, some of the things that are traditionally said about God, I think, are metaphysically impossible. Okay, but also, I think, like, you know, do, maybe do you have any examples? There? Sorry. Oh, uh, being all powerful. I guess I think that's metaphysically impossible. Being, okay. Or being infinitely powerful. So I think you could you could have any degree of power, but there's no maximum degree of power, and you can't be infinitely powerful. Infinitely power, yeah. Right? Sort of like how, yeah, there like there's no largest natural number. So there's just natural numbers getting bigger and bigger and infinity isn't a number. Yeah. <laughs> so that's analogous to how I think like there's there's no property being maximally powerful. There's just like more and more degrees of power. Okay. Um, Couldn't maximally anyway, just be the highest amount? I, I get the infinite, yeah. infinitely powerful. Yeah, there's no highest amount, right? Yeah. It's like the yeah. largest number. There's no Let's largest number. They just get bigger and bigger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Um, well, maybe I'm wrong, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that's like that. Um, Okay, but you know, I think you could have like a view that's recognizably theistic without saying all the things that are traditionally said. So maybe there's an extremely powerful creator, intelligent creator, who's also extremely good and extremely knowledgeable. Yeah. And then, I mean, is that God? It's like, I get. Right? So I guess you could call that theism. So in that case, then I, then I'm agnostic about theism. Okay. And his son uh, and then, is, uh, you know, Jesus Christ, maybe even, and he died for your sins. And, and now we're messing with the probabilities here. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, you're making the probability lower, but still, still possible <laughs> as far as I know. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, so like, you know, I think that, I think there are two explanations of fine tuning. There's the multiverse and then there's intelligent design. Mm. And they're both amazing, right? Wow. Which, by the way, I mean, in, I do not mean a, sense of praise right like being amazing means it's less yeah. less likely on the face oh, okay. of it, yeah. those are amazing but yeah. they're the only two things that somebody has thought of so yeah. like you're like which one of these is less amazing i don't know okay so, yeah yeah dr Rappi. So, so just on that point if you go with the kind of mccall style aristotelian and view of modality you get a different account I mean, it depends whether you think that the fine tuning is, you know, the values are fixed in the initial state or not. If they're fixed in the initial state, they're necessary. So there's the explanation. If they're not, then what you've got is some sort of chance transition because they weren't fixed. They go from being not fixed to fixed, in which case doesn't matter what the probability is, you're committed to that explanation anyway, because there's numbers the, the size of the improbability doesn't matter once you've accepted that it was just a chance transition. Okay. So uh, there are other options that have been considered, though many people think that these options are kind of crazy. Yeah, Philip Goff says uh, the universe designed itself in his cosmopsychism. And I guess that'd be in a similar case as your uh, chance, where now the probability, probabilities go out the window because it's a, a personal cause. Uh, personal cause i guess yeah i don't know i don't want to talk smack on this position because he's not here um yeah, yeah. but well yeah so I, I don't know so you know i don't know if we want to say more about the fine-tuning thing um some of the responses to the fine-tuning argument i think um you know i i think are bad because they would also be responses in hypothetical scenarios in which surely you would have evidence for theism right so suppose hmm. that somehow it was built into the laws of nature that you know there are certain uh crystals that when they form they form into the shape of the letters made by god <laughs> and I, like and like there's these different crystals that form made yeah, by yeah. god in all of the late languages of the world oh, yeah right yeah. <laughs> and then but you know nothing else and then like and but you know just stipulate that it's like it's built into the laws of nature Okay, and so then, you know, if we have one of these responses to the fine tuning argument that says, oh, you can't assign probabilities to the laws of nature, so you can't infer anything, 
so then that response implies that even in the made by God world, you have no reason to think that there's any kind of intelligent designer, right? And like, come on. Okay, so that doesn't so 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 that doesn't sound good for the um, for the certain views, but it doesn't seem to touch the Aristotelian modality view. Um, well, no, I, I mean, like you know, so so like in my scenario, so like it was always built into the laws that you know there would be these made by yeah. God messages, and so then oh, yeah, so but, then but, like but the truth, but the but the truth is that what you're talking about is impossible, right? Uh, I mean, well, I mean, just you, I'm assuming there are no such crystals. Are you 100% certain that it's impossible? Um, <laughs> so, so the question about certainty is kind of interesting at this mm. point. No, right? The it, it will be crazy to take the view that you accept to be certain. But still, mm. when if the view that you accept says that certain things are impossible, then that's what you should think, right? That is your view. It's just that you hold it tentatively. It's open to revision. But I mean, I think, which is kind of sensible. But, no, but if there's like, but then we answer the question by looking to see what our view says. No, but I think like if there's, you know, a possibility, <laughs> if there's a possibility that the big God, by God world could happen, then I think there's an intelligible question as to what you sh should say sure. or like what would be confirmed if that were to happen. So I don't, but but then. Possibility in what sense? Is there a metaphysical possibility? I think not. If you mean, could somebody dream up this speculation and then we could think about how that speculation squares with the evidence that we've got? Well, in that case, not well, because we have none of these crystals. And I think yeah. we can be very confident that we'll never find one of them. Yeah, but I mean, like, you if do... the question is, would it, would it, what, what would we think? If you know, this is sort of like Hume's question about the voice from the sky. What would we think? Oh, well, actually, I don't know what we think in that circumstance. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but I mean, we wouldn't just shrug our shoulders and go, "Well, it's necessary that no. it's that way," so it doesn't no, need any sure, explanation. Sure, sure, yeah. that's that's probably true, right? But then, what you've got there is something I think different from the fine tuning of the constants. So I mean maybe hmm. I don't I'm not convinced that there's a very good parallel between the kind of the, yeah. the, the crystals. So I mean you did say built into the laws. I'm not sure how that's gonna work exactly. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I haven't worked out the physics model. Yeah, that that yeah. We get, we we still got to find these crystals, and then we yeah. can back backfill it and figure it out. Yeah. Uh, well, Doctor Uppy, um, what do you think? Is there is there a best argument for theism, and uh, how probable is theism? A lot of people will know what you're going to say here. <laughs> um, well, you can probably guess. I mean, I'm so on the on the theory that I've got, theism just turns out to be impossible. Right. Yeah. So one way of going is to say it gets probability zero, yeah. but I'm not going to go that way um, unless you just say what's the probability with respect to your theory. Right. Right. Because because I don't think my, I mean, as I just said, it would be absurd for me to think that my theory was certain in all respects. That would be just crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that it's very useful to talk about probability beyond this. What I think is that there can be reasonable disagreement <laughs> that there, there are other worldviews that very smart people hold that disagree with mine in ever so many ways because that's the nature of philosophy and sure. metaphysical speculation um and it can be perfectly reasonable for people to accept some other view so that's that's the yeah. kind of how i want to talk about these things i just don't want to talk about probability yeah well, so how... I don't think that I sort of yeah. have probabilities for beyond the relative to my view. Yeah. I don't have another set of probabilities that says, well, you know, Bill Craig's view gets this much and Richard Swinburne's gets that much and Alvin Planting's gets that much and okay. Mike Humor's gets so much and so on, right? I just, 
I just don't have probabilities like that. Yeah. Um, on the question, what's the best argument for theism? Well, obviously, some kind of cumulative case mm. argument. So, I mean, Swinburne, I think, has the most developed cumulative case. So I think that his is the best argument that's been put together so far, though I expect that there are theists who could put together kind of better cases than his if they bother to take yeah. him as a model and try and set out a kind of cumulative case. Yeah. If they took Swinburne and uh, and posed it, uh, the universe starting in 1950, then it would presumably be more likely. Uh, so maybe maybe I'll try. Maybe we're on to something here. Right. Well, there's there's lots of options. I mean, there's yeah. lots of controversial from from kind of Christian viewpoint. There's lots of con that's controversial about Swinburne's. Viewpoint. You're absolutely right. Yeah, um, argument, right. and so you can feel you know you, you can develop an alternative, and but that seems to me to be the right kind of model. Okay. 